Hi, this is Bill Lett, and we're here today to talk about um, some questions and answers with teams that are look, implementing the 24 steps right now. Uh, we have Andre and Sergey from IMSLIDE, and more specifically, they're from the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, and they're here for the Global Founder Skills Accelerator program for three months here at MIT, where they get to launch their, um, their, their new venture or find out if it's not viable. Um, so, this will be a fun session. The name of their company is Imslide. So first of all, Andre, why don't you tell us a little bit about Imslide? So yeah, we're doing early leukemia diagnostics. Yeah. That's a new technique which allows us to determine leukemia more precisely and at the same time um, more cost effective. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different problem that a lot of people have when they're doing apps and IT. So this will be an interesting session. Yeah. Um, okay, so why don't you fire away with the questions you have. So yeah, we have some questions about TAM market, yeah? So how do we determine the right size of that market so that it wouldn't be too big for a company or too small for a company? Right, so, so in, in your case it's a leukemia diagnostic, so you're going to have very high IP. So, you're, you, so when, you, when you succeed it's going to be a very high margin. So the way, that, but it's also going to incur a lot of um, upfront costs. So the way that I usually say is between two, 20 million and 100 million is the right number, but it depends on how quickly you can get there. In your case, it's going to take you longer time to get there. But when you get there, the margins are going to be higher. Um, so I would still look at it and say, it better be between at least 20 million and up to 100 million. And it could be even bigger in your case, because you're going to have very strong IP. The, the, the next question I would so I would say that that rule between 20 million and 100 million holds for years, and it should be a very profitable beachhead market as well, because of the high margins. The question I would ask then, you know, what would be the follow-on market after this, after you get this leukemia market? Are you looking at your beachhead market as being a geography? Is it Russia? Is it Europe? Is it United States? Is it some smaller, or is it just leukemia worldwide? Actually, uh, our technology is um, applicable uh, worldwide, yeah, but on some certain narrow segment of market. Uh, actually, we determined our market size, yeah, and it is estimated to be maybe one hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars in but the United States. In the United yeah. States, yeah. That's all, one hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. That's too small. Of course, That's small. Yeah. 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 We understand that. So why is it so small? Because we have a very small and very specific application for our method. So we can uh, uh, improve the detection of leukemia only for a particular type of leukemia called hairy cell leukemia. So oh. it's a very uncommon disease and so the beachhead market is very small. So on this beachhead market of course we have a lot of advantages uh, before the other uh, technologies. but. No, it's a very small and specific market. So this is a really good example of once you figure out your beachhead market, it's you know it's very rarely too small. But in your case, it's usually too big, and then we say you have to further segment. In your case, it's too small, so now you have to go back and find a, a more attractive market than that. So that would be too small. I would say you need to get to twenty million dollars, a market that would be twenty million dollars a year if you dominated it, or higher. We wish you could find that market. Yeah. Now That's what you're here yeah, for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. So we have some more questions about that TM market. So does TM market usually heavily differ in IT industry and in biotech? Yeah, I, so it does differ because so, sometimes, you know, it depends when your TAM if you can achieve, you know, if you can get that TAM um, or your beachhead market really quickly then the TAM doesn't necessarily have to be really big because you can march through it, you can get dominant market share and move on to the next one. However, in biotech, it's, uh, in your situation, it takes you a long time to get to it. So I, would be, I, don't want it, I wouldn't want it to be very small because you have to invest a lot of money to get there. So if you said, well, we can develop a mobile app and we can get to $10 million a year you know, within one year, I'd say that's great as long as it leads to other things. But in yours, you have such an upfront investment, it better be at least $20 million a year in, in uh, yeah. total addressable market. And to invest a, a huge amount of money yeah, to get into the market. Yeah. 
the price of poker in your ears is very, very high, whereas in a mobile app it wouldn't be. In many IT apps, the website, e-commerce, it, it isn't that. But since your upfront cost is so high, you're, you're, to get to cash flow positive, your total addressable market needs to be larger than it would for some ones that have a lower upfront cost. Bill, I would like to ask you one question. It's really crucial for us. So if you are making a really innovative new product, so you have no competitors, you have no analogs in the world in the United States and some other places. So how can you estimate your value for your potential customer? Because you have no competitors, you have no analogs. So how can you estimate the price the value for your uh, customer. So Sergey, I would say the first, the, the first part of that premise is one of the things we say to our students all the time. There is always competition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can't, you, you know, they're doing it today and, and the competition might be to do nothing. So, so, and to say that there's, if it's a good market, as soon as you do something, there will be competition. So if someone says there's no competition, then the next response is then there's no market. So there will be some competition if you go in and prove that. But what specifically? Because you think your algorithm is so good because no one else will be able to diagnose leukemia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a very small and very specific market here, but for this disease, for this very uncommon disease, our method is better, is extremely better than other uh, methods. So for example, we can make the price for one test about one thousand dollars and right. people can pay it because now this disease uh, is isn't detected by yeah. uh, by come uh, by that current sense. current technologies so, right right yeah so uh, we can't estimate the price yeah right the the, the, the value or the price because the value that you're creating with the, the no. price, what you're going to charge them, you know it's not going to cost you very much, yeah. but your question is how much do we charge them for? Yeah. So the first thing is is that if, it's, if you charge them a million dollars for it, well, that's an awful lot. So then they'd have to think, is it worth paying a million dollars to do this, or should I just try to live with leukemia? If you charge them a million dollars, then it will create competitors that will say, if they're getting a million dollars for it, and there will be someone else that comes up with a solution. I mean, I don't, I've never seen anything that someone else hasn't been able to come up with, given time, if it's an attractive market, someone else hasn't been able to come up with a solution. So I think you have to assume that sooner or later someone's gonna come up with a solution. Now what you can usually do is you can usually price it at a higher at the beginning and start bringing it down over time and getting those people who pay a lot and then finding the right price point. In, um, Forget what step it is. It's like 13 or something where we first you figure out how you're going to extract value and then you figure out the pricing. Um, is a one time price the right way to do it? I mean, that's a good question. I think in your case it probably is. What is it, a shot? How, how do you detect leukemia? Is it, is it, it's not a shot, it's a uh, test, right? Yeah, that's one blood test, yeah. And that's it. So well, it's well, a one time charge. Not, yeah. Okay, yeah. so, so the, the business model. Let's assume it's just a one-time charge. I would think a lot about that. Then you're going to have to think about what's the right price point and test that. And how. then to do that, you have to go back to the decision-making unit and say, how much is the insurance company going to pay yeah. for it? Yeah, insurance and, and so that's probably going to dictate what your price is. Because if they're willing to pay you know, $1,500, um, as the example in the book talks about Canova with Charles, he priced it, you know, they were willing to pay $25,000 for a robot for people on their, um, on their uh, wheelchairs. Well, then if they were gonna, if they were gonna reimburse him at 25,000, then he charged 24,000 so that they would get it for reimbursement. If he charged 27,000, well, all of a sudden, it'd be much harder to buy it. So you wanna make it easy for the people to buy it too. So that's an important distinguishing factor when you do it. So, one, when you say no competition, be very careful. You don't want to, yeah, yeah. Don't want to think like that. It's gonna, there is competition. And, and the second thing I would say is your pricing um, could start high and come down over time. You have to think that you don't want it so high. But in reality, the pricing will be determined by your decision-making unit and what will make that, that process run as fast as possible. Yeah, and how fast should 
the target addressable market grow in a successful business? You know, um, this happens a lot. I mean, in Blue Ocean Strategy, you, you, if you're creating a new market, nobody knows what it is before. Um, but it should, if you get dominant market share, you want it at least to be stable. And then you're going to get that market, you're going to get your market share, you're going to get your profits, and then you're going to move to a follow on market after that. If it grows, that's better. Um, but it doesn't, there's no set rate that it has to grow. You just don't want it to go negative. Yeah. <laughs> if it's stable or going up, it can be a very good beachhead market for you, especially if you have strong intellectual property. Because if it's stable, you're not going to get a lot of competitors necessarily coming in. Yeah. Whereas if it's growing, you'll get more competitors that come in. But what's not good is if it's going down. That's not good. That's not where you want to be. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so there we have it, direct from Moscow, the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, as they're implementing the 24 steps. And um, I think it's very exciting to see how this is going to play out. So congratulations, Andre and Sergey, and we look forward to big things. Russian scientists have been known to solve a lot of difficult problems. We won't disappoint you. Good.